Hi, and welcome to this episode of I've Got This Kid. I'm your host, Sharina Williams, homeschooling mom, excited podcaster, and speech and language pathologist. I'm here to answer all of your questions related to play, language, development, speech, and everything else that falls in between. So I wanted to do a special segment for everyone out there because we've got some serious stuff going on with this COVID-19 and parents across America are suddenly being turned into homeschoolers. And I'm already a homeschooler, so that part was not a huge adjustment for my family. However, I know that many of you guys out there, this is a huge adjustment for you. So that's what we're going to unpack today. However, before we start unpacking all of that good stuff with tips and tools, I want to make sure that you guys know that we have a mailing list. And you can find and become a part of that mailing list by going to the website, iheartspeechtherapy.com. Go ahead and join because there you're going to get up-to-date information about blogs, events, and when the ebook is coming out and all kinds of stuff that will keep you updated as to what's going on. And so I want to make sure that we're connected in that way, guys, and just know that we're not going to bombard you with a bunch of stuff, but well-intended, well-thought-out information that'll be beneficial to you and your family. Additionally, if you have not already subscribed to my social media pages, we have Facebook, Instagram, and we also have Twitter. Go ahead and find me and follow me. And there's another place where you'll get stuff that will not be released on my podcast or on my mailing list. We'll have tips there. We'll have all kinds of stuff there. You'll be able to look at me and my family shacked in a fool and doing crazy stuff. I hope that's not like patent it, that shacked in a fool thing. But no, we're going to be doing all kinds of great stuff. I actually did my first story this week of Christian, just so you guys will know, like when I say that we're in this together, oh my gosh, we are so in this together, okay? So I don't want you guys to think that I'm just out here dishing out this information without going through it with you because you know what? I'm right there in the trenches with you and we're getting better together. So let's continue to connect, grow, and learn together. So with all that being said, let's dive into things, y'all. Let's let's unwrap this. So we are going to learn today some tips and some tools. And you know what? Honestly, some of you guys might be doing this stuff. But if you are not, go ahead and take some notes and see if, if it works for you. And if it does, I want to hear from you guys. I totally want to hear from you and hear if you guys executed any of these tips and tools. And how did it turn out? You can email me at questions at I've got this kid.com or you can send me a message through any of my social media pr- pages. And if you don't want it to be out there in the open for everybody to see, I understand. Go ahead and private message me. I think that's the right lingo for that. But yeah, send me a message and let me know how it works out. All right. We're getting better together. So with that being said, tip number one, I am going to probably like keep referring back to this tip because it is oh so important. Remember, this time is not summertime. You know, summertime, we get a little bit, I don't know, laxed in our schedules, or some families keep their kiddos on the same schedules. But my first tip is to create a daily schedule. Please create a daily schedule. Like, I'm so serious about this daily schedule situation that in my show notes, you will find my template at the bottom just to give you an idea of what my daily schedule looks like for the kids. And I have them separated out. I'm not messing around with that daily schedule. They have a from the time you wake up to the time you meet me downstairs for homeschooling daily schedule. And then they have their homeschooling daily schedule. So if they're coming to me or they try to come to me, I say to them, what's your schedule say? Where are you supposed to be doing? So they don't try to come to me and I don't have to be mad at them because I could just say to them, what's your schedule say? Did you do everything on your schedule? Did you do it to the best of your ability? And they're either going to give like a strong yes or strong no. That's like the one time parents you want to make sure that you're getting like good yes and no questions because you can end that conversation real quick if they have not done everything on that daily checklist. And the coolest part about the daily schedule and the daily checklist, like if you know something's not done, you can be like, hey, did you do such and such? And give them that direct question and they give you like the shifty eyes. (laughs) You know the shifty eyes. (laughs) 
<laughs> and they'll, they'll either like scurry off <laughs> to go do whatever it is on that, that list. But, uh, or, or they might try to negotiate with you. I don't know. My kids, it depends on the day. I could get a mix. But make sure, again, to have that daily schedule. If you need some ideas and you're like, Sharina, thank you for the idea about the daily schedule. I looked at yours. I don't love your daily schedule. Man, no problem. You need to make your daily schedule work and fit for you and your family, especially if you have a larger family, because then you might want to have like different things and different tools, whatever works for you. The goal is just to have one. And what is the point of a daily schedule if nobody can see it? So make sure that you're putting that daily schedule in a place where it is visible and a place to where the kids can't get a hold of it. And then the daily schedule comes up missing because mine came up missing a few times. And I'm like, we're arguing about brushing teeth. I don't want to argue about brushing teeth. It's on your daily daily schedule. So for that to come up missing, are we having some miscommunication about like what we should be doing on a day to day? So that's just, you know, for the personal hygiene stuff. But for like your school schedule, because you guys are all now homeschoolers, at least for the next few weeks, try to have a daily schedule of what you want your kiddos to do while they're working on their work. So it might be circle time in the morning. And then after circle time, and circle time is not just for the little ones, it's also for the big ones too. And it's honestly just to get everybody on the same page. So my kids are seven and 10 and we still do a circle time, but we call it morning meeting now because they're older. And in that morning meeting, we'll do like the date just so they can be oriented to time. We also do a scripture of the day and I have them think about the scripture of the day and what it means to them and how they'll apply it. And yes, they can answer those questions at that age. Um, We also do like a word of the day activity, which is where we do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. The last thing we did with the word of the day, we just had a stack of words and I would have them find as many words as they could out of that one word. Or lately we are, we're actually wrapping up making sentences out of the words. So if I gave you the word rainbow and shoe, the two words rainbow and shoe, then you have to come up with a good sentence about rainbow and shoe. And what's even cooler about that is I've started teaching the little one how to edit and like how to describe and how to bring out information and detail. So that's a really cool way to like make your kiddos writers without throwing the whole shebang at them and making it fun. And I'm telling you, like, if I try to skip over the word of the day, it's problematic. So <laughs> so just remember, whatever it is you start with them, keep it going or else. Um, and then after that, we have our time together. Now, I don't have one kid. A lot of families out there have multiple kids. And so what I do is, again, back to that schedule, They all have a schedule planned out of their independent work and then the work that they have to do with me. And that's like the direct instructional time. And during that direct instructional time, most of the time it's separate just because they're on separate age levels or grade levels. And so sometimes I will, depending on what it is, I'll do some things together. But for the most part, like our math and our English language arts, we do that stuff separately. But like science, history and social studies, we do that together. The seven year old can handle the fifth grader stuff. And so that's how we kind of navigate through that. And it's all about working smarter, not harder. And so if you have like one lesson plan for, you know, the multitude, then they'll catch on. And parents, don't be surprised. The little ones are picking up a lot more than what you think. So don't don't think that they can't handle some of that stuff. And you can always put stuff in a language that's easy for them to understand. Now, if you're not a hands-on person and you're like, and eh, this direct instruction isn't necessarily my thing, not for all subjects, or I'm comfortable with other subjects, my suggestion would be if you could find some community around you to where you know, like, my friend such and such is great at English language arts, such and such is great at math, such and such is great at science, like, you can create your own little virtual homeschooling community But again, it goes back to like planning a schedule. In my house, I'm obviously the English language arts writing person. I take charge of that. And then my husband takes charge of like the sciences because he 
likes to do experiments and he likes to blow things up and he likes to be messy. And I don't like that. I don't like it. I like watching it. I just don't want to do it. And so I stay in my lane and he stays in his lane because he doesn't want to write and he doesn't want to edit. And it works for us. It totally works for us. So again, keep that daily schedule going. Not only is it important for your kiddos to stay on schedule, it's also important for you to have that schedule because it provides a sense of normalcy and it gives everybody something to look forward to and it takes out the question of what's next. Also make sure too that with that daily schedule, after you create it, after you post it, make sure to discuss it with all the adults or the older teenagers who may be in charge of the little ones, whoever it is that has like some kind of authority in the house. You want to make sure that they're privy to that daily schedule as well, because if you're the only one doing it, guess who the kids are going to go to? Yep. Everybody but you. Mm Mm-hmm. They're going to find everybody but you (laughs) because they're going to resist. But it really is a beautiful thing and it works a lot better when you have it. So that's that's my point number one. Stick to a daily schedule. And yes, I know I went off on a rant because, man, those schedules, it keeps me in check. Last week, my schedule was off. And this week, I know that I have a good foundation and I have a great schedule. And so I will be back on it. And I've been giving the kids like warnings like we're back on schedule next week. I'm back to waking you up early again. Like, don't get comfortable with the late bedtime. It was just a different kind of week. I'm serious. So, number two, make each day theme-based. I know, I know. You're like, how are we making things theme-based in this house? Are we going from, like, the living room to the dining room and creating themes out of that? I know we're limited as far as being in the house, or be, you know, taking walks. We can't have too much uh, socialization outside of our home. Like we are our social community right now outside of what you can do virtually. But giving a theme every day gives everybody something to look forward to. And what I mean by your theme, this could be like on Monday, let's look forward to a walk. Tuesday, let's look forward to game day. Wednesday, let's look forward to watching movies together. Thursday, video games. I'll even participate. Friday, cooking. Saturday, play outside. Sunday, let's go on a bike ride. So every day outside of like you being playing teacher now, you also have something to look forward to do as a family and something to do together with your family that's not just based on academics. And you'd be surprised how much your kiddos will look forward to that time. And honestly, you too. Um, Before all the COVID-19 was going on, me and the kids really worked hard at doing physical education. In our physical education, we were playing kickball and playing foursquare and playing volleyball and jump roping and skating and bike riding. And guess what? We can still look forward to those things because those are things that we can do at home. And we don't have to worry about going anywhere physically or, you know, connecting with people or putting anybody at risk or putting ourselves at risk for that matter. And so theme days work. My daughter has started cooking like crazy. I came back yesterday from my office and this girl made chocolate chip cinnamon pancakes and they were delicious. And she's been she's been practicing that because right now her focus is on cooking. And so if you don't want your little one cooking every day, because I certainly don't want her cooking every day, you could give them a day. That was my point to that. I know you guys were like, why are you talking about her cooking? Because I'm going to give her a day next week that she can cook with me around and I don't come home to it, even though the pancakes were great. It's yeah, the point is she did that without me being there. I was a little scared about that. (laughs) All right. So number three, assign chores. So again, I'm at home with the kids all day, all the time, or they're with me at clinic or my husband has them. And I know the feeling of waking up, cleaning up, and you blink and the house looks like it hasn't been touched. Just, I know, shake your heads. I know. I know. It's, yeah, I know. It's, it's real in those streets right now. It is real. And so funny enough, I have to share this. 
I am a homeschooling parent, but last week, I don't know what it was about last week. It seems like I just could not stay on top of anything. And I'm like, but we do this already. So what's going on? I think it was just the anxiety and the emotion going on with everything. But I had to get back. I had to like recalibrate and go back to my schedule and go back to my checklist because they also have daily chores and remind them that daily chores are not optional. (laughs) They are part of something that is required of them. And if you don't already have a daily chore schedule for your family, I suggest making them one. And of course, make it age appropriate for each child. Like you don't expect the two-year-old to do what the 15-year-old can do. Like that's unreasonable. But there are certain things that two-year-olds can do. Three-year-olds can do. If they know their colors, guess what? They can sort laundry. Absolutely, they can. They know the difference between whites, darks, reds, and colors. That's an appropriate task for them. If they have toys out and you have a toy box, they can pick those toys up. That's totally appropriate. If you have older kiddos who can wash dishes, they can wash dishes. They can be responsible for their bathroom. You might have to go behind them and just do a little bit more. But at least to get them started on things, you can totally create a chore chart so you're not the only one who's cleaning up and taking care of the house and you're not shaking your head and ready to hurt everybody for messing up your house or ready to scream because everybody messed up your house. So, I mean, in in that instance, don't be afraid to reinforce the rule. Even if this is new for you guys, remember, you're the parent and you get to decide, you get to reinforce the rules. So it's totally okay to tell them, like, this is what we're doing now. We're all home. We're all going to pitch in because we're better together. And they'll understand that, that, you know, mommy shouldn't have to do it all. Daddy shouldn't have to do it all. Grandma shouldn't have to do it all. Grandpa shouldn't have to do it all. Whoever is the adult caregiver in the house should not have to be the only one on cleanup duty. It's everybody's responsibility. Number four. This one, I can't, I can't say how important it is and how overlooked it is. Check in daily. Just spend a few minutes and check in. Check in about what's working. Check in about what's not working. We all have two ears and one mouth. And during those check-ins, we really need to be hearing each other out. We really need to be listening to each other, our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions about things, because this is different. And making sense of it for the little ones can be a little bit more difficult um, for the little ones who are used to going out and may not quite understand what's going on. If you have a kiddo with special needs and who's used to routine and they're very routine oriented, It's so important to just have that space to check in and continually remind them why we're doing this, why we are socially isolating right now, and why we can't, you know, do what we normally do. And even if it feels like they're not getting it in that moment, just do your best. Just honestly do your best. And it's not just for them. It's also for you because it's okay to share your thoughts and your ideas with your children Um, You know, use wisdom and give them information that is appropriate for their age and understanding certain things, you know, kind of should be off the table that you're explaining to them. But certain things, just talking about the day, talking about what went well, talking about what didn't go so well, talking about what we can improve, talking about those kinds of things. It's totally fair game. And so I encourage you to just check in with each other. And if you have a foundation like your daily schedule, you have that in place and you have your homeschool schedule, you have that in place and you have your cleaning schedule and those things are in place, that's a good platform if your foundation kind of gets shifted or things start to get a little bit off kilter, you have something to remind everybody that this is our foundation. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And this is how we need to continue to do it in order for us to thrive together and be okay everything that's going on. So please, please don't overlook that checking in. And finally, 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 We can't go to the nail shop. 
We can't go to the hair salon. <laughs> I got a list of we can't. <laughs> but we can. We can do some things at, at home, right? We can read a book. We can still FaceTime friends. We can still watch a favorite movie when everybody goes to bed that is for the adults and not for the kids. We can do so many things. I know we've gotten caught in the things that we can't do, but let's honestly think about the things that we can do and take advantage of that time to have some personal quiet time, some alone time. Because again, you guys are all in the house together and I don't care how much you love your family because I love my family to pieces, but I still need a minute to just be not mommy, not anything else, just Sharina and being excited and comfortable in that space. And let me tell you, moms, dads, caregivers, you guys deserve that space. I don't want anybody to tell you any different. Everybody deserves just some alone time, some decompressed time, how that translates for different people. Is it's different, you know, for me, it's just sitting down doing nothing or sweeping sometimes. Sometimes it's seriously sweeping. Sometimes I just want to sweep and the kids are like, I thought you were just going to go to bed. And I'm like, no, I'm going to sweep first and then I'll get my night routine going. But it just depends on who you are and what kind of gets you going and what, you know, resonates with you as this is recalibrating me, you know, in addition to reading. You can also do yoga. You can have some meditation or prayer time. There's so many things that you can do. You're not limited. You're not limited to anything. The only limits that you have are the ones that you put on yourself and you say you can't do. Uh, Now, I know you can't go outside and go shopping. You can't go to the malls. And I can tell you all the things you can't do, but you are empowered to do so many other things and have that quiet time to yourself. And not only that, it gives you something to look forward to in addition to caring for your kids during this time. So I want you guys to do that. And I'd love to hear some of your ideas around that. What are you guys doing for um, personal quiet time? I've been kind of like surfing the Internet a little bit. And or excuse me, I'm sorry. I said that completely wrong. I've been surfing through Facebook a little bit and seeing what people have been doing. And you guys have been creative out there. I heard one person say that they were putting on their makeup to go to get dressed up for the living room. That was hilarious. But that might be their thing that they love to do to feel like this is me. This is my time. This is something that matters to me. Some people will get dressed up to go to the next room, whatever it is to just make you feel whole and to make you feel empowered and to make you just feel like you during this time, you're going to have to be creative. Do it. But I'd love to hear from you guys. So please send some of that stuff in because you guys are great about like just coming up with ideas that I wouldn't even think of. I think sometimes I get stuck in a box. I don't know. Help me out, y'all. So I didn't want to give you guys all this information without having some tools to go along with it. And so again, I'm going to have some show notes and under the podcast to show you like my daily schedule and um, our homeschool schedule and just different ideas that you guys can use. I also recommend, oh, I didn't even add that, a planner. If you don't have a daily planner, get a homeschool daily planner. That'll help you too. keep organized. But I think I could put something, a link on there as far as like some daily planner ideas. And there's also some resources that I wanted to share with you guys that are happening. I believe Fandango is is allowing access to a bunch of movies. KQED is providing access to a bunch of their materials that are appropriate for your child's age level and TV shows and different things like that. But I, I believe, I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of learning materials there as well. So again, going back into if you know you're not great at teaching a certain subject, Use online resources as a tool. There's also some virtual field trips that are going on right now. Isn't that neat? I'm going to put that on my schedule. That's going to be one of my themes next week is a virtual field trip. And I can't wait to see how that goes. I'll probably report back. But I know that through redtry.com, um, there's some virtual tour online classes for kids. So check that out. It says it's localized to San Francisco or it says San Francisco, but I think Red Tricycle is... A national thing. So I would check them out anyway and see what's going on there. And I think that is about it, everybody. I'm going to wrap things up. But again, don't forget your five tips, creating a daily schedule, 
make every day a theme-based day, assign chores, check in daily, and insist on having personal quiet time or just special time, however you want to fill it in. Insist on having blank, all right? So that might be insist on having makeup put on, insist on having dressing up, insist on having quiet reading time, whatever it is, insist on having that for you because you deserve it. You're more wonderful than you think during this time and you're more you're stronger than what you think during this time and we're all going to get through this together. Again, if you haven't joined my mailing list, go ahead and do that at iheartspeechtherapy.com for our up-to-date information. And again, we're not going to bombard you with a bunch of stuff. We're just going to stay connected with you and send out pertinent information. And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And keep sending in those questions. I've been getting some good questions lately and some great comments. Again, this show is for you. We're, we're getting better together. We're connecting, learning, and growing. And we're having a blast doing it. Let's just keep making this fun, y'all. Until the next time, take care, y'all. <laughs>